Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Debbie B and this is Suey's Sunday. Today I have chosen to talk about books in a series. This one is part of a familiar series. It's part of the Beaufont books by Sarah Nofke and Michael Handel. This is the unexplainable fairy godmother Paris Beaufont book one. There is your front cover on Amazon. Oh my goodness. Let's read that blurb and then I'll go into what I think of the first book so far. Sorry it's dark, it's just, it's winter still for me and <laughs> things haven't started to brighten up yet. Um, yeah. Happily Ever After College has been churning out fairy godmothers for centuries, but the outdated curriculum can't keep up with the modern world. They need something edgy, something new to keep true love alive. They need Paris Beaufont. This fairy loses her lunch if she watches a romantic comedy. Love songs give her hives. She punched the last guy who tried to flirt with her. Needless to say, Paris Beaufont isn't the romantic type. But she's going to have to learn how to create budding love for others or she's going to jail. When a series of criminal offences forces Paris to attend Fairy Godmother College, she has to learn not to just stomach romance, but to master it. What this fairy godmother in training learns isn't just about love, and what she does for the college might change the planet forever. It is love that makes the world go round, after all. This has four and a half stars on Amazon, so yeah. There's just something about the Sarah Nofke, Michael and Del team that just makes me want more. Yeah, so you meet Paris at the beginning of this book, and from the moment you meet her, she's not Paris Beaufont, she has a different surname, but you're very aware of things around her. Towards the beginning of the book you do have a small chapter from Plato um, which implies that she is connected to the Beaufonts in some way. By the end of the book you're given a bit more information about what's going on. You have Paris and she is living with her uncle John who has set up a detective agency after her parents have gone missing basically. You will become aware that her parents who we know that she doesn't know are uh, Liv and Stefan from the first book series which was the Liv books. It's pushed us quite far ahead after the events of Liv and Sophia. So we're aware that Stefan and Liv aren't in the picture. We have become aware that they have somehow gone missing and that whatever they ha are doing or have done and put in place to protect Paris and all through that first book I was just thinking how has she become Paris when I thought the plan was for Liv to name her daughter after her mother Guinevere. It's quite an interesting first couple of chapters when you just like we know this is Paris Beaufont but how did she become Paris when she's supposed to be named after her grandmother and why is she not a Beaufont and why does she seem to have no recollection of her parents and what is going on and why is Plato stalking her essentially like how did we end up here I think that's what we're going to learn throughout how many books is this nine books after as it says in the book a series of criminal offences Paris is basically said by Uncle John who I believe is John as in lives John from the first section, who is one of the mortal seven for the House of Fourteen. <sighs> There's so much to be explained and I don't have the answers, which is what is making me looking forward to reading the rest of this and seeing where it all goes. Paris is basically given the options, just like, look, you've messed up. You either go to jail or you go to the Fairy Godmother College and you learn how to be a human being that doesn't just act on instinct all the time. But then, when she makes it to the Fairy Godmother College, she is confronted by Mei Ling. If you remember who Mei Ling is, that was Sophia's Fairy Godmother, Sophia Beaufont, so Liv's sister. Her aunt, Paris's aunt, uh, Mei Ling basically says, you cannot change while you are here. You know, there's something in the stars telling me that you are here to make big change for us, which we need. And you are not allowed to change yourself for this college. You can learn things, but you are not to change who you are. And so Parrish is put in this bit of predicament because she's just there going, I'm a person that acts on impulse. And 
to get through Fairy Godmother College, I am going to have to learn to not act on that impulse all the time. But at the same time, I've also been told not to change. So you're trying to find out if there's a balance that Paris can figure out through the series, where she can still remain integral to who she is, while also adapting slightly to where she is, but not compromising herself. Does that make sense? Um, she creates a friendship, because she's been brought up on Royal Lane, the magical lane in London. A lot of people are just going, but people don't live on Royal Lane. She was just like, but I do. You know, I was brought up on Royal Lane. Ma this magical street is all I've ever known. You know, we know she's a fairy. We understand how that happened, but the, the, the other characters in the book don't understand how she is a fairy and who her parents are and how that all happened. Happened. As I said, it's at the beginning of the book that you are told this is a Beaufort, and Plato knows who she is, and there's obviously some kind of protection spell on Paris to protect her from whatever she needs protecting from that her parents are involved in. I'm also at a point where I'm just like, what happened to Liv? What happened to her parents? How has it all ended up here? This feels like one big puzzle, and. Yeah, I am very, very, very excited to see how this goes. I did find it quite funny how they compare the Fairy Godmother College to uh, the Tooth Fairy College, because it's just very remnant of how my family treated the Tooth Fairy. Like, we always joked we had a Tooth Fairy in training, because sometimes, like, the Tooth would go and there'd be no money, or the Tooth would still be there and the money would still be there. So we joked that we had an in-training Tooth Fairy who didn't completely know what she was doing. <laughs> <laughs> that was my family's experience of the Tooth Fairy. A Tooth Fairy in training. So seeing the idea of Tooth Fairy training, yeah, it's just very remnant of my childhood. <laughs> it's obvious that Paris is a good person. Like, if she sees an injustice happening, she wants to rectify it. When she sees somebody at the college being bullied, her first instinct is to protect that person and tell off the bully. So she's obviously got a good heart in there. It's just about how to control that impulse because she realises that maybe her impulses may cause problems for other people. When a girl at the college is bullied by another student, she levitates, because obviously she's magic, she's a fairy, she levitates a pie and hovers it over the bully's head. The bully can't see it, but everybody else can. And so Paris is there going, I'll give you one more chance. And it doesn't work so she drops the pie on the person's head and then she realizes that by doing that she actually has caused work for the person who made the pie because it's like they have to make the pie again but then when she meets the chef they're just like oh actually i don't mind having to make it again because at least that bully got a pie in her head it's one of the it's like that kind of cause and effect type thing where Paris needs to realise how her behaviour and how her impulses affect other people and not just when it's a justice thing it's that whole thing of like every action has an equal positive reaction is that how it's I might be misremembering that. She needs to become in control of that balance a bit more. And so it would be so interesting to watch this character evolve and learn about who she is and where she's come from and the secrets that have obviously been held against her knowledge and wishes and how Plato's going to come back in. She also has her own little sidekick, which is a squirrel who's allergic to nuts. And I love him so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's a great start to give us a mystery with Paris and wondering what happened to Liv and Stefan, her parents. And, you know, are they still with us? You know, is Uncle John the John that we know from the Liv's book? There's so much to unpack and it's going to be done in nine books. So I have eight more books to go. So again, I'm going to do this in kind of a sequence. So after this, I'll probably do like, I'll go up to book three and then six and then nine probably. So this is just the one. The next one will be cover two books and then I'll do three and three. It feels like the easiest way to get through this. So the unexplainable fairy godmother, this the situation we're putting just makes me on edge. I'm just going, what's happened to them? Why are we here? How did we get here? <laughs> yeah, the unexplainable fairy godmother, by uh, Serenovsky and Michael Andel, the inscrutable Paris Beaufort, book number one. There we go. I am so excited, can you tell? Yeah, so nine books. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. So uh, stick around if you want to hear how I get on with Paris. If you have not seen me talking about the Sophia and the Live books, they are in my catalogue. <laughs>
in my back catalogue. So uh, my last series, proper series Sunday of 23, uh, was the last books of Liv. I did it in the wrong order. I started off with Sophia and then I went back to Liv and now I've come back to Paris to be able to go forwards. I'm very much looking forward to seeing where this all goes. It's so nice when you find a good series to kind of get your teeth into. It's like when you binge watching something and you're just like, yes, I am ready. Give me all of it. <laughs> I think we're getting a takeaway tonight. We've got some family coming up, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, so uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you on Wednesday with a regular video. Mm. Stay safe, everybody. I love you all. Bye.